Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with the Fitbit Inspire. I will give you some technical information and just uh, walk you through the steps of getting started with your new Fitbit. Alright, so just to unbox it, there is a nifty tab here to allow you to pull out this holder of the device. There we go. All right, so there is the watch on this uh, little plastic holder. There's nothing fancy about this. It's very plain Jane. I'll just take the watch off this little holder. There we go. And as you can see, this is just space saving. Right, on the inside there, you can see you've got another strap, a larger one. So this, that's why on the front it says small and large you've got your little uh, safety instructions warning and, and warranty information and that's it right I'll just show you the charging uh, connection quickly now it uses a probably a neodymium magnet which is a very powerful magnet as you can see um, what I'm doing here there are two little uh, pins there and, and they are set in springs so they are springs springy so if I press them in they can fall inside and then there's the uh, little uh, contacts there so when this is placed over there it kind of knows where to go because it is curved so that's very easy I mean as you can see just going over it look at that I mean you see okay so then you obviously plug this into your um, wall outlet if you've got a USB plug and I'll show you how to get started with that as well. All right. Okay, so straight out of the box, uh, let's uh, take some measurements. Just let's look at how much it weighs. Uh, there we go. Uh, that's 17.3 grams. And okay, now just to give you an idea on the dimensions. So if you're looking at it in the terms of the width at its resting position, there we go. That's kind of where it tapers in. That's 63 millimeters. And if you're looking at the thickness, and it's got quite a thick belly, which is uh, initially um, didn't bother me, but uh, we'll see shortly that is 12.74. So it's quite narrow here on the sides. So obviously that's where the goodies are, the battery and so forth. So if you're looking at the width, I'll also show you that. Um, it's not very thick. You're looking at like 16.1 millimeter. And I've, I've got another little generic uh, uh, fitness tracker here, which I got on Amazon, actually marketed for kids. And this was a very small one. And you can see that this one was 16. And if you look at this uh, new Fitbit, you can see it is um, 16 mils, while this one here, um, and this is a marketed for kids, also 16. But this looks narrower purely because it is longer. So you can have a look at that. Right, the thickness of the watch at its fattest point, you can see there's 12.75 millimeters. And just to compare, this is a generic one from Amazon that is sitting at 10. And here I have the uh, Band Pro, the Huawei, it's at 11. So although this seems like it's very fat, it's mostly because it tapers in quite aggressively towards the side. Uh, if you're looking at this, it's a very shiny gloss uh, finish here. It is uh, definitely plastic and underneath this is also plastic. So this is a, a very plasticky device. Except for here, you've got a nice alloy and check out the color uh, matching the strap at this lilac or almost like a, a mauvey a movie color in there there you got a purple all right just to show you how to get the strap on and off if you look closely you'll see there's a little handle there and i call it a handle because if you look this is actually called a spring bar that uh, piece of steel that's moving like that and it's got a little springs on the side it uh, springs inside and the little pins shift in and out and what is happening here is quite in in quite ingenious is it's actually got a little handle to shift that spring bar uh, up and down that little pin so that allows you to now adjust the size of this watch so you just take that out and there we go and you see I've got that run off and just to give you an idea in terms of the length the one uh, the, the the small one is just under 10 and a half centimeters whereas the longer one uh, you're looking at 13 centimeters so I'm going to put this back on and I'll just show you how to put it back on. If you look closely, you will see there's a hole there and there's a hole there. So that's that pin has got to get into that hole. So I just I just angle it in like that. And then with my forefinger, I just pull down on that little hand, the little handle of the 
the spring bar and there you can see it's in i'm not in love of these designs because what often happens and i can't say it will happen here is it often tears through the plastic uh, and breaks off there so i wonder how long this is going to last especially if your watch gets caught on something for example if you're wearing it and it gets caught on something will it just break this spring bar will you be looking for spring bars for your fitbit for example here is a set of spring bars and there is the fitbit one uh it's looking like it's pretty good quality i mean it's got a really uh, strong looking appearance and just to give you an idea that is 12.4 millimeters you m i don't know if this is going to be a, something that people are going to have to do but i'll just show you quickly while i'm getting into this review if you find that you're stuck and then you this thing is broken well i guess you could just get a regular spring bar but you know you obviously will need to know how to fit that and what you'll do is you'll have to use a flat screwdriver to put that in just like this this and you'll have to push down and wedge that in all right so moving on okay so this is what the underside looks like i'm a little bit concerned with all these uh, gaps here i can just imagine lots of dead skin and lint getting stuck there whereas if you compare it to the uh, old-fashioned or the uh, more common styles you can see that it's uh, probably more um uh, it's probably less likely to get dirty okay this is what it looks like on an adult wrist I have a, a medium to large size uh, I'm 18 centimeters so just to give you an idea the circumference is 18 centimeters if you want to see just a comparison this happens to be a band 3 that's what it looks like the Huawei band 3 and I'll just show you to you on a child's arm all right, so this is on a child's arm. This is a 12-year-old boy. And I put a Casio. This is an adult Casio G-Shock, almost like a diving watch, just to give you an idea of the comparison. Now, if you look at this on a child's uh, wrist, you can see how this fits perfectly and there is no uh, gaps forming you know normally with some of these fitness watches you find that the the there's gaps between the edges there and in this case it is fitting perfectly well and just to show you this is the small strap you can see there is still quite a lot of space uh, for the uh, the child to grow in terms of the small size strap okay coming back to an adult uh, as i said 18 centimeters here now this would would be too small okay because it would probably be quite annoying uh, just like that so for me i would have to use the large strap and if you see here at the back it is uh, quite nice it's got this uh, really nice alloy finish but if you look there that um, slots into there so it doesn't into any one of these uh, holes so it doesn't just move around at uh, at lip okay so getting started you will need to connect this to an app so straight away if I press the button here there's nothing here for you uh, obviously you just see the icon and then it says uh, Fitbit dot com forward slash setup so it's telling you where to go if you want to set this up but I'm gonna now step you through the setup of the Fitbit all right, so if you are on Android, you'll go into the Google Play Store and you'll search for Fitbit. Obviously, you can do this on the Apple Store as well. Now, I'll just install it. As you can see, it's a 47 meg file. Okay, once downloaded, uh, open the app. It's then going to ask you to register. If you haven't got a registration details already, you'll have to join Fitbit. It then gives you a list of the devices which you might be uh, uh, pairing with. And here's the list just for your reference. Okay, so this is the Inspire HR. I'll tap it. And now it says set up your Fitbit Inspire HR. I'll tap that. It wants you to enter your email and password. So straight away you can see that you cannot get going unless you do have a, a registration with Fitbit. Okay, right. If you have a username and password, at this point, uh, you will come through to this screen, which is the home screen. If you don't, well, then you would have to register and then it will ask you to pair your device at that moment. So I'll just take you to the pair your device section. It says there's set up device. And then it takes me to this, which Fitbit device are you setting up? Now it'll populate the list. And I'm going to be doing the Inspire HR. It says set up your Fitbit Inspire HR. Yes. Um, permission to use the Bluetooth. Yes. 
Right, then there are some uh, conditions you need to agree to. You have to scroll to the bottom of the page before the I agree icon lights up. And then it says... Um, then it, it, it says to you, should charge your device at the same time. Right, just showing you that this is how you would charge it. As you connect it, it does do a little bzzz, a little vibration. Um, if you don't have this type of a plug, you would have maybe your charger and you'll plug it directly into the USB like that. What I noticed is that if you unplug this a bit vigorously, you'll find that the uh, Fitbit tends to fall off. And if it's hanging here and you want to look at it, you see it's it's a little bit cumbersome and you have to make sure you have to get it back on there. So this, I'm not 100% sure I'm in love with this design as yet. Once you connect it, it shows you it's charging. You can see it was at 49% there. Okay, and then at this point, you will then say next. And then you'll allow the device to have access to your location. It's located the device. And you can see it's asking you for a code. There is the code 0832 and the pairing function is now taking place. And a little tick came on the screen. I don't know if you saw that. Okay, then at this point it's asking if you want to update it. So uh, you could do that now. Right, after the very long update, you can now continue. And you get a little smiley face and then you you press next and then there are some instructions in terms of how to use the device that I've already explained in terms of the strap and you go next again and then it's just showing you the swiping functions tapping the icon opens a feature and I will show you those shortly all right and now you are done and now you can go and wear your Fitbit Okay, so the minute you take it off charge, you can now get into the menu system and I'll show you more details shortly. All right, so here is the display. If you swing it up like that, there it comes on. You can also tap it and you can also press the button on the side to wake it up. Okay, so let's look at the watch itself. Now at the bottom here, you'll see parameters which you can change. Obviously the date, the steps for the day, uh, your heart rate, your current heart rate, um, your, your distance, calories burned. And that's called Smart Track, if I'm not mistaken. And what it is, it's a feature that is supposed to automatically acknowledge or count for exercise that is done um, without you starting it, manually starting it. So it's supposed to know that you're training. Uh, what it does is it checks after 15 minutes if you doing continuous activity and then it will count that these at the bottom here when i scroll here you'll see this is kind of the summary of your activity there's the sleep for last night um the 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 achievements that i've made uh, the distance covered smart track exercise calories so it's not very high and there's the heart rate it is measuring heart rate even though there is nothing connected there my, my wrist isn't there anyway so on here at this at the bottom here you can choose the parameter you want which is quite nice and if the if the watch goes to sleep and it comes back it remembers the parameter that you had chosen if you press and hold the button on the side here it takes you to the battery level and this little icon here is to wake the device Device by uh, flicking the wrist now if you see there um, it's showing you off now what is supposed to happen is when the watch goes to sleep if you flick the wrist it won't come on but keep in mind that I've noticed that that only w uh, functions like that in the night so if it is on um, and you flick the wrist during the night when you sleep what will happen is um, this uh, screen will, will light up and it might be a bit annoying for you while you are sleeping. So you can switch that off and then that doesn't happen. All right. Now, if you scroll down like this, you get to the main menus. Now, these are the menus. There are no more. And um, there is one other setting. If you are a, a female and you accept the uh, app to log your menstrual cycle, well, that will also be shown and it will actually update you on the days upon where you're, you 
are in, in terms of your cycle, your menstrual cycle. All right, so let's go up. Now let's look at exercise. You tap it to get involved. Then I see on the left-hand side, there's little dots, uh, very user-friendly. You can see I'm choosing the different types of exercise. And as I do, um, you can see I'm scrolling down. Those dots are now moving weights. So the other one was treadmill interval training, and there it ends. So if you tap on any one of these, it takes you to another menu. You can just say, let's start, or what you could do is... Um, it's showing you, you can uh, scroll up again, you can set your time in your training, the calories, so then it will update you when you've reached your goal. If you want to go back, you press the side button, maybe we don't want to do weights, let's do the treadmill, and then you say, uh, maybe you want to set the time that you want to train for, you can say 30 minutes, that's perfect, and then it's already acknowledged that, and then you could say, let's go. And then it starts your training. If you are want to end your training, you can just press the button on the side here and it immediately pauses it. If you press it again, it then stops it. And then you're finished. You have to acknowledge the finish. And now you're done. It brings you the summary of your little activity that you've done. Right. So now if you go to exercise, I'll just show you one more time. Maybe you don't choose. Maybe you choose uh, not running, but a uh, bike. Um, there's the parameters on the side. You can set the time and obviously the distance. Okay. Um, going to another f a menu item, there's the relax, the phone comes with, uh, sorry, the watch comes with two features here, a two minute and a five minute option for some breathing exercise which is supposed to help you relax. Um, it's going to give you instructions on what to do, take a deep breath, slow and so forth and it's got some little um, statements here just to try and calm you down uh, if you are somebody who needs that extra assistance. Now I'm pressing this, I got out of that menu and now it's got timers, it's just got two two timers, the usual countdown timer as well as stopwatch. Now stopwatch just uh, starts and it go, it counts up and that's it. Um, if you see on the top there, you can see there is, it's showing you there's uh, an arrow there you can just reset. Now obviously there's the hour and the minute and then the second. So if you see that thing starting right now, there are no hours, but that will go uh, lit once the um, hours start to um, to get uh, engaged there. All right, now what I want to do is I want to show you the countdown. There's the countdown. You can see that if I tap it, now you will need to decide. Can you see there's an arrow that came at the top there as I started? It's it's telling me that there's something there and you can reset it and then you can also set the time that you want it to count down, hours or minutes. All right, then moving along. Now you'll see you'll have alarms. This has to be set in the app. You can't do it from the watch. And then there's settings. There aren't very many. Um, you can put your GPS on or off. Uh, your heart rate on or off. And these are binary. It's just you tap it to engage yes or no. Uh, you can clear the user data. And then uh, that's about it. Okay. And there's nothing further there. Now, what you'll, you'll notice is how clear the screen is. You can get other uh, faces for the, um, the home screen. There are other faces and I'll show you what they look like now. Right there you can see additional clock faces which you may choose from. And you will notice that the screen timeout is pretty quick as you can see. Let's just count that. One, two, three, four. Five. So it's just less than five seconds. So um, that might be quite low for some people. Some people might want the screen to stay on longer. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick comparison. Uh, this happens to be a polar chest strap. I've confirmed that this is accurate. Uh, so I'm going to put this on and then just compare it to the watch and just to see if there is some difference. All right, so there you can see I've started two little training sessions. Um, they've been going for 30 seconds and there's my heart rate. And just to show you on the Fitbit side, it's also there, 38, 38. All right, so now you can uh, get your heart rate. You can scroll up or down. So you, you kind of think of it like a, a rotation in terms of the menu. There we go. I'm at 66, 67. They're in total agreement. And now I'm going to increase my heart rate. Okay, so just to summarize, the phone is linked to the Polar Bluetooth belt. So that's using a different platform. That's Polar and that's a chest strap. While the watch is the Fitbit and shortly I will show you the Fitbit's interface on another phone which is linked to the Fitbit watch. Right, so there's the heart rate, 82, 85. Um, I'm now going to try and peak it and let it fall down. You can see there was a little peak there. Um, we'll compare the graphs afterwards. OK, 
Okay, so there you can see it's going up quite a bit there, 91. I'm still here at 70, so it's taking a bit longer to respond on this side. Let's see if it does come through. Um, I can feel my heart rate's gone up, so I know it is correct. Um, I have verified the polar, so I'm happy to use it as a reference. Uh, there you can see it's starting to come up. It did miss that uh, that peak of, uh, of 90, unfortunately, but maybe it'll come through on the uh, app on the phone maybe you, it'll show it on the graph all right so let's go for maybe another few seconds and then just compare the two graphs i'm going to increase my uh, heart rate once again Alright, so there we go. I did some star jumps. This watch is sitting firmly on my arm. It has been reading the heart rate. There you can see 99, 81. It is taking a bit of time to get 84. There it is taking a bit of time. It's not quite registering that peak though, um, 93. And there you can see it's going down. I will show you the graphs after the fact. And now it's coming down. So it, it, I, I'm worried that it, it may have missed it. Uh, so let's let it uh, my heart rate go to 65 somewhere there and then I'll stop both training and then just have a look at the um, the graphs on the app okay so just uh, having a look there it's now at 67 I'm still at 75 on this side for some reason um, let's just see all right, so now I'm getting close to my resting heart rate. It's three and a half. It's almost four minutes. Uh, they're, they're starting to uh, match each other now. They're 63, 64. All right, I'm going to stop the training. All right, so now let's have a look at both the apps in terms of the uh, graph. Okay, so you'll need to just uh, sync the watch if it hasn't already done it. It's there, just it's already synced. Okay, so there it says synced a moment ago. All right, so I just want to uh, make sure. Yes, now it is synced. All right, I'll go back and then let's have a look at the training that has just been done. Okay, so there is the uh, training and let's have a look and compare it. Right, so having a look here, I'm just analyzing. You can see the minimum line there is 58 and the maximum there is 86. So it's only registered a maximum heart rate of 86. And you can see there I got close to that uh, amount twice. Now looking at the polar. Okay, having a look at the polar, um, there is the graph. And uh, just to zoom into that. Right, now just having a look here, you can see there was that first peak, which I think they both got. Um, but if you look here, uh, there was another peak. And then this one, unfortunately, the Fitbit did not get. I understand that I was not in that uh, zone for very long. Uh, but just highlighting to you the difference between on the wrist versus on the chest. Okay, so this is the uh, polar graph for the chest strap. This is not the watch graph. The watch graph was the one that I just showed you using the Fitbit app. So I'm just comparing the two, just showing you whether the uh, chest strap is more accurate in terms of heart rate measurement. So you can make your mind up for yourself. Okay, then lastly, I just want to do a glove test. Now, the reason I do this is sometimes people wear gloves and uh, will you be able to still use the watch? Yes, very well. I'm just going to get back to the main menu and you can see how sensitive the screen is. No complaints here, as you can see. Uh, a, a very good response okay so this is just my uh, early review i will then uh, wear the watch and um, i'll test the gps and the other features and also compare the heart rate obviously with a more intensive training session to improve the validity of the result all right so what i like about this watch is how clear the screen is i mean that is so easy to read the strap for me is premium. I feel like it's a high quality uh, material here. What I don't like, and it is not just a Fitbit issue, is the very plastic. Um, it's, I feel like it's plastic. And I would like something more premium. But then obviously with more premium materials comes high, heavier weight. And I understand there's a trade-off there. So that brings me to the end of my initial review on this Fitbit. Uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.